All right, we have been hired to solve the case of the missing piece. Let's put our thinking caps on and get to work. By the way, I will tell you when I want you to write stuff down in your interactive notebook. Let's examine the evidence. My shape has two sets of parallel sides. My shape has four vertices. My angles are both obtuse and acute. The area is 80 inches squared. My base is 20 inches. From this evidence, I should be able to say what the name of my shape is and which formula do I use. And then I can find, bum bum bum, the missing piece. All right, let's get some definitions down. If you do not know these definitions of these words and can't be saying them with me in your head, then you need to write them down. What does parallel mean? Parallel lines are lines that will never meet. So think railroad tracks. They will never meet. When it says two sets, that's like two pairs of shoes. How many shoes would you have if you had two pairs of shoes, there's four, right? One for the left, one for the right. So two sets means there's two pairs of it. Vertices, what are vertices? All right, vertices are two or more, uh, where two or more, that's a really bad looking or, more lines meet. So that would be the vertices, or that's a vertex. Vertices is more than one. Obtuse. Obtuse is an angle that is larger than 90 degrees. Acute is an angle that is smaller than 90 degrees. All right, based on that, you should already have a shape in your head. Let's see if you're right. All right, we can automatically rule out a couple of these. I can rule out that one and that one because they each have three vertices. Now I need to look at the classifications of these other ones. They all have four vertices. So, so far, so good. They could all be it. They have two sets of parallel lines. So in this one, I find one set, but that's it, so it can't be this one. So I'm left with my rectangle or my parallelogram. By the way, rectangle, oops, rectangle, parallelogram. All right, they both have two sets of parallel sides. This set is parallel to that one. If I keep extending, it'll never meet if I draw it straight and that one. So it's the angles that we're talking about. I know that this one has 90 degree angles and this one has an obtuse and it has two acute. Oops, that should only be one. There, acute angle. So it cannot be this one. It has to be my parallelogram. It is real important to know your classifications of shapes because a lot of times they're going to give you verbal clues or written clues as to which shape it is. All right, we said our shape was a parallelogram, so we are going to use that formula right there. So I want you to write that formula down and I want you to draw a picture of your shape in your interactive notebook. We're gonna work on solving it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is always write my formula down. Going back to the evidence we received, I know that my area is 80 inches squared and my base is 20 inches. Okay, well, so now I need to look at what information I do have. I find it helpful to kind of color code. My area is 80 inches and there's my area. My base is 20 inches, and there's my base. So which piece did I not highlight? Well, that would be the, oops. There, I hit the wrong tool, sorry. That would be the height. All right, so now I substitute in. 
I'm going to put 80 on this side, my equal sign. My base is 20 and height is what I'm looking for. So um, as you know from when we did equations, I'm going to rewrite it with my variable and the coefficient on the left side. All that is, there's a rewrite. Um, if you remember, this guy right here is the coefficient. This guy is the variable. The operation going on between the two is multiplication. To undo the multiplication, we have to get the variable by itself. We have to isolate the variable, so we're going to use the opposite to undo it. We're going to use division. Those two will cancel each other out, and I am left with H there. On this case, on this one right here, we need to remember, if you don't already know how to simplify, you can simplify by dropping zeros off on both of them. That immediately divides by 10. If you don't recognize it, your numerator is being divided by your denominator, and it will go in there four times. So our height is four inches. We're not going to want to put squared on that because we're not talking about an area. And so if we go back over here, what we're finding out is that if I were to drop a parallel line, I'm sorry, a perpendicular line, that is four inches. That's going from one parallel to another parallel. My base is 20 inches and my total area is 80 inches. And so that makes quite a lot of sense, doesn't it? Okay. If you didn't write the math down, you should have in your book. So pause it and do that if you didn't do that with me. All right, we again have another case. This one tells me that my shape has two congruent sides. My shape has three vertices. My area is 77 centimeters squared and my base is seven centimeters squares. From this information, I should be able to say the name of my shape and figure out which formula I need for my star chart. And then I can figure out what is the missing piece. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, we're gonna do a little vocabulary on this side. So if you don't know it, make sure you write it down. Congruent is the first thing we need because it tells me that two sides are congruent. Congruent means same size, same shape. Okay, we talked about vertices in the last one. It's where two lines join together. It tells me I have three of them, so that means my shape is a triangle. But I think I'm going to need this to know which triangle I need. All right, based on the three vertices, I can get rid of this one, this one, and this one, because they all have four vertices. So we need to look at the triangle. This guy right here is an equilateral triangle. And what that means is that side, that side, and the third side are all congruent. They're all the same size. But my clue was my shape has two congruent sides. Well, this one does have two congruent sides, but all three sides are congruent, so we can't use that one. So let's look at this one. This one's congruent, and that one's congruent. This guy is obviously longer. So this is an equilateral triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. This isosceles has two congruent sides. This triangle has three congruent sides. So based on this information, that is the one I want. So I want you to draw the shape on your paper, and I want you to write down the formula. We're going to use this formula from our star chart here, and I want you to remember that one half multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. They're gonna default to multiplication in algebra. That's just the way they do it. So let's first start out with writing the formula. A equals one half of my base times height. And from our original 
um, evidence, I know that my area is equal to 77 centimeters squared and my base is equal to seven centimeters. All right, let's see what we have. My area, I have that one. My base, I have this one. So I'm going to plug in what I do know in place of these variables. All right, so I substituted in and um, we're looking for our height. So make sure you're writing this down as we go. Okay, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my variable on the left side. It's just the standard algebraic way to do things. So I have one half seven times h equal 77. And I wanna look at this right here. Everything that's going on in this one is multiplication. Um, so what we wanna do is get this by itself, simplify this down. I need to simplify this one half in the seven. There's a couple ways I could go about doing that. Um, I could get rid of the fraction first by uh, uh, multiplying by its inverse. If I multiply by two over one, which is the same thing as two, this cancels each other's out. But if I do it to one side, I'm going to have to do it to the other side. So I get 7h equals 154. Then I can divide by seven and I get h equals, remember that's 154, divide it by seven. Do a small problem if you can't do this in your head and it will be 22 centimeters, not squared because we're solving for the height. I want to go back to this real quick. If this didn't make sense to you why I multiplied by 2 to clear it, you can also think of I could do 1 half of 7. 1 half of 7 would be 3.5 and 77. So I could do that and then I would be dividing by 3.5. Now as you can see we can do this but it's going to add a little bit of complication or difficulty because we'll have a decimal in the divisor, which we can do. But what we need to remember is it needs to go to the wall. And so if there was a decimal here, it would go over and I need to add a zero. And then when we do that, we would still get 22. What I chose to do here is to take the fraction out first and treat it individually and not go ahead and combine it. Um, so both ways work. This one you need to remember the rule of dividing with the decimal that I cannot have a decimal in the divisor so essentially you're multiplying it by 10 and then this one by 10 and it moves over. If one moves over the other one will move over. All right we have one last set of evidence to examine. My shape has one set of parallel sides my shape has four vertices. My area is 30 meters square. One base is five meters and the other is 10 meters. What is the name of my shape? What formula do I use? And bum, 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 what is the missing piece? All right, we have defined parallel already. We did that back on the first, which means the two sides will never meet. They, like a train track, they're parallel. One set is like one set of shoes. You are wearing one set of shoes. How many shoes are on your feet? One on each foot, two shoes, one set. Vertices is where the two lines meet. There's four of them. All right, I bet you already have, this is a big clue on what shape it is. Let's see if you pick the right one. Ta-da, it is our friend the trapezoid, yay! All right. It has exactly one set of parallel lines, one set, okay? And so the basis, which would be here, because that's our parallel lines, are different lengths. So that's why we have two base measurements. So we are going to use the trapezoid to finish out this assignment. Woohoo! 
All right, so I circled the trapezoid formula. Remember, they like to spin trapezoids around. You're looking for the parallel lines in it. I always start out with writing my formula. I do not care how smart or wonderful you think you are. Start out with writing your formula. You will find that you will copy the wrong formula upon occasion. And if you double check what you did, you might get it right. Okay, from our shape, we know that my area is 30 meters squared. Base one is five meters. Base two is 10 meters. Please remember, write these as subscripts. They're not up in the air, they're down below the line, kind of like the way the tail of the Y and the G and the P hang. So I like to color code, you know I do. Color, the colors I'm picking, by the way, don't mean anything other than that's what my iPad has. Um, I have area, I have base one, oops, base one, and I have base two. So again, I'm missing the height in this one. Now, we just picked height in this one because that's a common thing they do. They could pull out base one, base two, and it would all still be worked, one of them. As long as they're just pulling out one piece, you can still substitute in. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I substituted in, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rewrite it on the other side to where the variable's on the other side. I kind of came up some just because of space. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to solve what is in my parentheses first. I'm gonna go ahead and combine those two. So I'm gonna have one half times 15 times H. I think if I write it out like that, it'll make more sense to you, equals 30, okay? Same thing. I want to get rid of that fraction. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 1. We know that is the same thing as just times 2. So these are going to cross out. And I'm left with the coefficient 15, the variable h equals, and 2 times 30 is 60. So I have now simplified my expression down. I'm going to do the opposite, because remember, this is multiplication, so the opposite would be division. I'm going to divide by 15, and I'm going to find that my height is equal to 4 meters. Again, not squared. So that means that the height that drops in a perpendicular line from base to base is 4 meters. This one is five meters. This is 10 meters. So we can go ahead and label our picture. And you need to realize a lot of times, like I've said, the pictures are not necessarily proportionate to the information given. They kind of like to mess you up sometimes. So just make sure you're paying attention to it. All right, I think you're ready for classwork. Let's go. You have been a great detective today.